There are three shading techniques that you will be working with for this assignment for these practices. Hatching is a series of fine parallel lines. They can just be something simple like that. The closer together you put them, the darker it's going to be. Cross hatching is taking those same lines. They can be two or they can be three. It kind of depends, four or five. It just It's crossing over, think of a tic-tac-toe. Same thing, the closer together they are, the darker the value will appear. Now blending is a little bit different. It can be done with your finger. This is called a blending stump. They come in all different kinds of sizes and you clean them using pieces of sandpaper. What's important though is if you clean them is that you tilt them to the side so that you can keep a point on your blending stump. So tortillion is the one of the names, blending stump is the other name. Blending is what we all do and what we know the most. You lay in an even, gradual, smooth application of value and then you have to smooth it in. So you can't just do the technique like this. You either use your finger, you use a paper towel, uh, whatever you want, and you smooth that together. A blending stump helps you get into crooks and crevices, but if you have any kind of value on your blending stump, it's gonna come on to your paper. Now stippling, I do, now you, it's, well, you can do it with pencil. I prefer to save time, and for your practice purposes, I prefer that you use a ultra fine point Sharpie. Dots is the key word. You have to use dots, not hatch marks. That is not stippling. It is a tedious process. Some students enjoy it. They find it relaxing. Other students find it horribly tedious, too much, too time consuming. Same thing as the other three. Well, the first two. The closer together you put your dots, the darker your value is going to be. The further apart you put your dots, the lighter the value is going to be. Now that's important on all of these because that determines your light source and where that's working. You're gonna have two or three, you're gonna have three pages. This is gonna be your stippling. We're gonna pick one. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you have this one, which shows you blending. So that's the one we're gonna do on this page here. And you can just imitate the examples that you see. We'll show that in just a moment. Then your light source here, you have two choices, hatching and cross hatching. And you're gonna do one of each and then pick what you want for the last one, okay? So we just talked about blending. It's a smooth, gradual application of color. They have set it up for you to determine your light source. So it's not like you have these objects on your table and you're gonna shade with that object. Now you notice I like to turn my paper when I work. So anything that's furthest away from your light source is gonna be your darkest edge. You also need to remember to include your shadows. When you are shading, you're gonna shade with the shape of the object, you're gonna stay inside the lines. Now this is a cube. So I'm doing the lines or the shading for this particular object with the base and the top direction. Then I will take my blending stump or my finger or my paper towel and I'm gonna do the same direction and I'm gonna smooth that in and even that out. Then you'll continue. Now, again, the closer to your light source, the lighter it's gonna be, so you can just mimic what you see here. And the further away it is, the darker. So that means this edge would still be dark and then it would get lighter as it goes over and even lighter as it gets to that corner where the light source is actually hitting it. And then you do the same thing again. You're gonna smooth in your edges. And remember that as your blending stump picks up value, you can use that value for shading on your object. Process is the same here. The further is from your light source is gonna be your darkest edge. You're going with the object. And you're gonna shade and blend on the side and make it lighter where that corner is because that's where the direct light source is. This is, of course, a little easier to understand if you physically see a light on a cube. And then smooth all that out, make it even. When you get to your cone in your cylinder, you're gonna do your same process, but you're gonna curve that as you work. That's gonna trick the eye into thinking that you are going around that object, taking it from flat to a 3D form. 
So it's a process that you just have to figure out what works for you. But you can tell that I'm curving that in that manner like that. And you will do that all the way up and down this object as well as across the top. The furthest away, it's going to be darker. And your uh, mechanical pencil will be just fine. I just chose to use a drawing pencil for this. And don't forget, you'll notice I didn't do my shadow here. So again, just imitate what you have, put your shape on, and then do your shading. Same thing with that object. Same thing with your cone. You'll draw that little shape. And the same thing with your cylinder. You'll imitate what you see. This one, though, make sure that you're curving that edge, which is your top. And then, of course, blending means you have to smooth and even that out. Watch being outside your form. And you work with the paper with however it works for you. I just prefer to turn my paper while I work. Because this is still not smooth and even, I will come back over this shading and blending because I went a little quick as I was working. And then you uh, do the same curve on the edge over there. What's nice about this particular worksheet is you have examples to guide you while you work. On the back, you're gonna have your cross hatching and hatching. I'm gonna start with hatching for the cylinder and I'll do cross hatching on the cube. And then you pick however you wanna do yours. You may do the same exact thing and then you pick which one you wanna repeat here. Just like with blending, hatching has to take and have a, it's sort of like a little J hook. You have to turn that on both edges. If you do just a straight hatching, then your object is going to be flat. So you have to make sure that you're curving that. Your light source is here. Flip to the front if you need it to guide you, and you when you put those on there. And remember, hatching is using those lines. The closer together you put them, this is also not about pencil pressure. The closer together you put it, then the more dark value that you have, the further apart you put it, the lighter it's going to be. Again, it's you layer your value. You don't have to take and put a lot of pressure with your work and you shade that, then don't forget that you will have a shadow that you will also have to shade using the hatching technique, doing the same thing, layering that to get that really dark value, one layered hatching line on top of another. That's how you're gonna do that. I'm gonna stop there just to save time. Go to the hatching, sorry, cross hatching on this one. Again, it's going to be tic-tac-toes, threes. I kind of, I start off with two and I almost always go to three. Same thing, You're gonna I'm, again, I'm turning my paper. I apologize if that's a problem. You're gonna do however you wanna set those up. Same process, look at where your dark values are. Layer your cross hatching on top of other cross hatching marks. That's gonna create your dark value while you work, two of them or three of them. Same process, don't forget that you're gonna to need to draw your edge for your shadow and then cross hatch that as well. And then pick what you want for here. Either way, it's if it's hatching, it's curved. If it's cross hatching, it's still curved so that it tricks the eye into thinking it's a three-dimensional object. Then your last one, and I'm using this little piece of paper because uh, Sharpie does go through. You have three objects, pick the one you want to do your stippling on, get a Sharpie, and unless you have your own kind of pen, and then start stippling. This is the one that's gonna take the longest amount of time because it is the most tedious. I have not set this up in advance, so I'm not gonna do a lot of work on this to save time. But again, the importance is that you have to do dots while you're working. Stippling is dots, not little hatch marks, not I'm, I'm bored, I'm in a hurry. Take your time, process what you're doing, and get it set up. You can see where I got those dots really close to each other and on top, so that's really dark, and I may want to put some other dots closer together to even that out while I'm working. And I also find that a lot of times I'll create sort of a boundary edge with my dots coming down the object there to set that up. And then you just pick whichever of the three you want. You're only doing one on this page. You're doing all three on your hatching, blending, and cross hatching. You're doing all of those objects on there. Don't forget your name and your class period. Blending, make sure it's smoothed out. The softer the pencil lead, the smoother it's gonna be. 
hatching, cross hatching, you pick which objects you're gonna do that on, and then your stippling. They've given you the light source, so it shouldn't be too complicated for how you wish to set that up.